Are premium AI models in GitHub Copilot really worth paying for? In this video, I'll put them to the test by building a complete c -sharp API application and backend database completely from scratch using GitHub Copilot agent mode. And we'll compare the results using both free and premium models. We'll see where the free tier struggles and if Claude Sonate 4 can deliver cleaner code with fewer errors and deliver an overall faster build time. If you ever wondered if GitHub Copilot Pro was worth the $10 a month, this video will give you the answer. I've set up a GitHub Copilot account that has a Pro subscription. So as part of this, I've developed this prompt. Now this prompt started off as a few paragraphs. I iterated it a couple times, and then I took that iteration and put it into ChatGPT. And I asked ChatGPT to refine that prompt for agent mode in Copilot Chat, and this is what it yielded. It's a very detailed explanation of what we want to build, project outline, SQL data model, API layer, and some best practices that I've asked it to follow. A lot of these are based on uh, issues I ran into other times I've executed this. Uh, one of the big things that I did come up with is I used Postman to test the API results, and I was manually creating all these APIs. Well, I simply asked it at the end, saying Postman will be used, go ahead and create my Postman file so I can just import that. And every time it creates this Postman file and it works fantastic. So now why would I want to build a demo showing the pro account versus the free account? Well, the free account had a lot of shortcomings. So what I'm hoping is with the pro account that does come with the $10 monthly fee that we can get much better results from that. And we're going to take a look and we're going to see in, um, how the results uh, differ. And it's drastically different uh, in terms of the quality of the output that we get here. And, and we'll see that. Uh, another problem I had is the chat GBT based model, which is what was used for uh, the free account, almost never actually created the database model for me. It would create the model and give me a script and I'd have to execute it in SQL. Every time I've used the premium account, it has created that model for me automatically in SQL. So that's something else that's also cool. So with that, let's jump over to uh, VS Code. I'm going to grab this and do Control C on that while I have it here. And let's look at what I have set up here in VS Code. This is pretty much a vanilla install of VS Code. I have some basic extensions installed over here, C Sharp, and then my GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot Chat, of course, are here because we're going to need those. And But I do want to point out a couple settings here related to Copilot Chat. So I go under Settings, I go under Chat, here under Chat. One of them is this Max requests in agent mode. Uh, this defaults, I think, to 10 or 15. Uh, I bump it up to 250. This is the amount of times that the copilot uh, chat will talk back to the model before it prompts you to continue or cancel. So it's thinking that it might uh, be stuck in some sort of loop or something like that, but really it's just doing a bunch of execution based on what we're asking it. So I'll bump this up to 250. And the other setting down here is auto accept delay. So when it makes changes to files using agent mode, it's going to highlight those changes for you in the file, and then you can accept or deny on a per file basis. Since I'm building a whole new application from scratch, I just want everything to be auto accepted. So by default, this is zero, which means nothing is auto accepted. So I'm going to set this to 15 seconds so that then everything is just auto accepted. Now, if you were doing this in a larger application, you probably wouldn't want to enable this setting or set it as something higher so you could actually watch it as it executed, uh, but just keep in mind of what this setting does. And the other setting is an experimental setting, which is down here about tool auto approve. So our agent mode in Copilot chat can execute tools and execute command lines. These will do things like .NET build, create projects, stuff like that. And we have the ability to say, just go ahead and auto approve all of those. By default, this checkbox is not checked. And when it's not checked, every time it executes something in the terminal, it's going to prompt you to accept that command or accept it for the whole session. We're just going to go ahead and set this checkbox to checked. So it's going to automatically run all those commands for us. Now, this is probably something you wouldn't want to check because depending on what you're asking your agent to do, it could do some things that are not what you really would want it to do. So keep in mind how this checkbox impacts things, but for the purposes of this demo in an isolated environment, I'm going to, have to go ahead and leave that checked. So with that, let's go ahead and get started building our application using our agent mode in, in Copilot chat. I'm going to first uh, open a new folder and go to my C drive under data, and I'm going to call it deck of cards. 
And I already have my SQL Server set up. It's just a vanilla instance of SQL 2022 Developer Edition. I have nothing else set up here. Uh, if Copilot uh, chat window is not open, you can use this checkbox at the top here to toggle the chat window. Uh, you want to make sure down here it's in agent mode. And then here's where we have our different models. So if you do have a free GitHub account, you won't see access to all these models. You'll see just these standard models at the top um, before everything was using uh, GPT-4.1. Um, this time we're going to use Claude 4 to see if we have better results. I have tried Gemini 2.5 Pro. I had high expectations of that and every time it is hung. So it is in preview mode. So I'm hoping that that issue gets resolved. The other thing to point out here is there is a cost associated in terms of counting against your quota in terms of premium requests. So when you make an agent mode call, it is one premium request for that whole execution of that agent mode. So given our large prompt, we're asking you to do a whole bunch of things. Based on my testing, that seems to only count as one premium request. And in your free tier, you get one, uh, 50 premium requests a month. In my pro plan, I get 300 premium requests a month. So what you see over here on the right is a multiplier. So some models will have um, more than a 1x multiplier for your premium request. In this case, this one has less than one, but there are times where there's some models that will be a 10x or a 5x time in here. So keep that in mind. We're just going to use our Claude at 4x as we execute this. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here. I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. Now, one of the first things I ask it to do as it runs is to go ahead and first build me an outline of everything it's going to do. It's going to create that outline for us, and then we can review and approve that outline. And then we're going to go ahead and watch it execute. So here's my outline here. In general, it looks similar to what we saw on the ChatGPT 4.1. Again, follow the link below to the video execution of ChatGPT 4.1 if you want to see its agent execution and can kind of compare the two side by side. Here's the outline here. Do you want to proceed? I'm going to say approved. And now it's going to go ahead and execute. Now we shouldn't be prompted for anything else as this runs. Now with the chat GPT model, I would be prompted from time to time to have to uh, approve things and even do some things in the terminal to approve things. With the, the Claude model, I've never been prompted. In fact, with the Claude model, it's 100% every time I execute, it completes all the SQL tasks for me automatically in SQL Server, no interaction whatsoever. I do see several errors in the terminal as we kind of go through this running but the Claude model seems to come in and auto fix those itself. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run. I'm gonna speed up the execution of this uh, in the video. If you don't wanna just watch through it run line by line, use the chapter markers below. Let's jump to the end and we'll see what the output looks like at the end. And with that, I'm just gonna let this run. It usually runs 10 or 15 minutes and I'll be back. Okay, now that's completed. There was one piece in here where I was waiting for any key to uh, exit. I did have to hit the space bar there for it to get out of that terminal window. Other than that, it completed everything completely on its own. Um, you can see here, it gave me a complete overview, a final project summary of everything that it created. Uh, it created our database components in our database for us automatically, fully deployed, no interaction uh, by us whatsoever. Created our 
uh, test documentation and test projects with error handling, uh, launched uh, our project, our solution here, tested it out, and even created our Postman file uh, for us, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and let's uh, see some of the differences here. And y'all won't necessarily know unless you jump back into code and run it using uh, ChatGPT 4.1. But one of the big differences here is this test the test cases. Uh, the test cases using uh, the Claude 4 are significantly more uh, detailed and robust than what we saw with ChatGPT 4.1. So that's definitely a big, big advantage to this approach. In addition to that, even this summary on the right over here that we got, there was no summary provided by any of my chat uh, GPT executions. So that's a, that's a nice addition that it has there in addition to a readme file here. Other than that, uh, you know, the implementation of the uh, API was pretty consistent. This one did end up coming in with some models here for uh, cards and decks uh, that I didn't necessarily see in chat GPT as well. Overall, though, my impression is the code feels uh, better, uh, more thought out, uh, more robust, cleaner overall. So it just overall feels like a much better uh, implementation. Uh, plus, uh, other than that one uh, key here I had to hit enter, I uh, didn't have that in other past runs. Um, zero hands-on for us during the whole execution of that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see if we can run this using our Postman scripts. I'm going to jump over to Postman. I'm going to go import and grab our file. Go under our C drive, under data, deck of cards. Here's our Postman script. And let's expand this here. And another thing to point out here as compared to our other models um, is that the Postman scripts are much more defined here. There's actually unit tests defined here in the Postman scripts. With the ChatGPT model, we didn't get those. So that's a nice addition. We're just gonna go ahead to create deck and send the request. And sure enough, it was successful. And the another thing to point out here is that the results from this call is actually much more rich and robust than what we saw with the ChatGPT call. Again, I wasn't clear in the again I wasn't clear in the prompt file as to really what I wanted for inputs and outputs that specifically. So here, in addition to deck ID, we get the number of cards uh, left in the deck, the number of ones drawn remaining, and the created date, which again is a nice addition. And now we could use this deck ID if we wanted to, to go ahead and test some of these other calls, but I won't really walk through all that. So hopefully this gave you a, a good sense of kind of the differences. Now I would definitely, like I said, suggest checking my other video where I used the ChatGPT 4.1 model and where that did have a lot of problems when I was uh, going through and building that. The experience here with the premium model, much more cleaner, much more clearer, and gives you much better results than I was expecting. So with that, I would definitely suggest for $10 a month, that pro plan definitely seems to be a good place to go, especially if you're going to leverage the agent mode and the copilot chat. So with that, thank you for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.